So good morning again. Uh, so uh, just, I mean, there are a vast majority of, franc of Francophones today, but still, <laughs> with, uh, some of our colleagues, unfortunately, could not get the visa to come to, uh, to Europe. Uh, but still, uh, feel free to speak French. There is uh, automatic translation. Uh, there is a translation, uh, Jean-Luc is here, and uh, uh, both online. So, um, you know, it's an opportunity also to be more uh, uh, comfortable with the language way you speak. So, uh, not going to take too long. Uh, I will just start today with, uh, you know, just providing you uh, uh, a very good, a very quick overview of where we are in, in terms of cholera these, these days. Just to, uh, as you will see, to highlight the importance of, uh, you know, the case management. You'll see that we have major problem with uh, uh, increasing case fatality rates to an unacceptable level, despite the fact that we have all the solution. So, um, you know, uh, in terms of cholera, people tend to, to speak a bit more about uh, uh, lack of vaccine and uh, wash, lack of wash, basically. But I think it is really the time also to highlight the fact that uh, in 2023, people are dying just because you know, they don't have access to basic health care. So, where are we? So as of today, if today, uh, as of last week, <laughs> uh, uh, already uh, since the beginning of the year, we have over 28 countries that have reported cases. And this is just a country for which we are sure of the information. Okay, so it does not mean in any way to be exhaustive. Uh, and not only we have uh, 28 countries that have reported outbreak, but uh, uh, 24 of them are still uh, having experiencing an outbreak now. And this is compared to uh, 18 uh, to the same period last year. So last year, I'm sure you remember, was already a very, very bad year. 2021 was a bad year, and this one is even worse. So, and as you all know, of course, the seasonality uh, is uh, is variable, huh? and uh, we are uh, we have a number of countries that will enter in the peak transmission season. So the number of countries affected is, uh, uh, of course, expected to increase over the coming weeks. So again, it's really a snapshot, huh? but uh, so again, we have more country in 2023 than in 2022, country that are affected. And that uh, was again, the same situation for 2021 with uh, vers uh, 22 versus 21. Uh, so, because of the seasonality, uh, but you know, end of 2022, beginning 23 was uh, uh, extremely bad with massive outbreak in Austral Africa, including in uh, uh, you know largest outbreak in decades, uh, uh, if not ever, in Malawi, in Mozambique, uh, but also uh, South Africa. Uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, uh, etc. Uh, we had very large outbreak in Eastern Africa, um, and also last year uh, in the Indian subcontinent and Middle East. So this was very clearly driven with uh, by the, the very strong effect uh, of so three consecutive La Nina uh, and the climatic uh, phenomenon. According to meteorologists, and it's not me, I am a poor epidemiologist, but uh, you know, according to meteorologists, this is absolutely unusual. To have three consecutive years with La Nina almost never happened. And now we are in directly into El Nino without neutral phase, phase, so without transition, which again is something which never happened. So if there are still some people who are contesting the reality of climate change. <laughs> Please leave, leave this room. <laughs> so uh, the large outbreak uh, that we have seen last year and this year, almost all of them, IT would be one of the examples, but almost all the other large outbreak were all linked to a major climatic event. Massive flood, uh, successive cyclone, massive droughts, uh, uh, unprecedented uh, musson, uh, etc. So most of the very large outbreaks, they were all linked to that. 
So again, we are still in the peak uh, transmission season or, or about to start in some region. It's post monsoon in the uh, Indian subcontinent. Uh, uh, drought and flood will start again in the, you know, in the Caribbean, in uh, East, in uh, Australia, Africa, and in other parts of the world. And of course, uh, you know, the impact of the very strong La Nina on a very, you know, very strong El Nino on uh the earth affected by la nina is something which is still uh to be uh documented and we don't know how bad it will be but it's likely it will be bad so uh for those who remember since almost a year not uh, not exactly a year but uh, almost a year ago the uh, icg the international coordination group had to temporarily suspend the two dose regimen for vaccination due to lack of vaccine we are a year after that and we are still in the same situation. Still not enough vaccine, either to respond to outbreak and of course, even less to prevent occurrence of outbreak. And this is not likely to change soon. So uh, the shortage is not restricted to uh, OCV, but also to many other cholera commodity, including IV fluid, ORS, uh, diagnosis kits that has been extremely challenges to procure. Uh, with some peak, I mean, we have managed globally and with good collaboration with UNICEF, with MSF to find the way to, to fill the biggest gap. But uh, due to shortage, for example, I mean, there are a number of countries where it's bulk, which is provided because kits are no longer available and they cannot just be bought just because of the increased demand. All that in a context of extremely scarce, if not uh, existing uh, resource to control cholera, that has not been attracting a lot the international community, unfortunately. So I'm not going to go in the detail of all the 28 countries, but this is just a snapshot of the situation in uh, the East and Western Africa. Um, that you can see that, you know, the, 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 not only the size of the outbreak, but also the spread within the differently, the different affected countries. If you have some question, I can answer after. So in case of mortality and death, okay, as you know, the data were, uh, that, uh, that are accessible to WHO are extremely limited. So the weekly epidemiological record is no official reporting, but you know, we are counting apple and carrot. It's very difficult to compare data. So data are not always representative of the situation. Yet, this is the only source of information that we have. So uh, consolidated. So 2021, after uh, years of regular decrease uh, of uh, in terms of case fatality rate and in number of crude number of uh, deaths reported, in 2021 the case fatality rate restarted to increase. Okay, 2022 was very bad. I'm focusing more in Africa, not to be blaming on them, but this, because this is the only continent where we have data that are kind of reliable. Okay. Uh, or at least more reliable and comparable than other parts of the world. So you can see in 2021, the number of crises. And now in 2022, the year is not yet finished. We don't have all the country. And we have already more cases, more deaths, sorry, uh, uh, reported than in the previous years. And almost uh, the same number as for the whole year 2021. And the things which for me is most striking is to try to give some, some more clarity. I mean, I took out of the global number of deaths, the, the countries that have faced massive, massive outbreak in the past years. Haiti uh, uh, in, the, in the year 2010 and 20, uh, Nigeria uh, that has a massive outbreak last year, uh, uh, and Yemen where we know that the number of cases and, uh, and tests is kind of... Uh, questionable, but uh, but still, what you can see on the blue bar, it's a number of deaths in all the other countries, which is sharply increasing. So this is not with a link to a spotted outbreak in a number of limited countries, it's global. So this is why the case management and all the discussion, you know, it's not, this is a priority. How can we reduce mortality? Uh, I don't know what is in yellow. Okay, so again, um, so there, there was massive progress done by a number of countries uh, uh, since uh, since the implementation of the roadmap. Um, again, CFR very high, more and larger outbreak, deadlier. But the thing is also countries that are now uh, affected or reaffected. Have, many of them have not been affected for years and sometimes decades. For Lebanon, it was 30 years without cases. 
Um, and now we have also countries like Haiti, Syria, Lebanon, Pakistan, South Africa, and a number of others that have not reported cases for decades that are now reaffected. So not only, I mean, we started with uh, in 2017 with a list of 47 countries, and now we are at 51. So um, the classical factor, they continue to uh, uh, to to prevail, huh? of course, uh, poverty, mortality, population movement, conflict, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The climatic event I have mentioned, but again, I mean, I don't want to be the black crow or bringing the bad omen, but the situation can even be worse. Okay, everybody is looking at Libya. Okay, there is no case around Libya for the time being, but you know, can be imported. Huh? There are a lot of exportation of cases <laughs> currently happening in the world. Okay. Uh, Ukraine, uh, that has been a concern for the past two years. Uh, Myanmar, okay, it is uh, silent, but we don't know what's happening in Myanmar, bordering Bangladesh, okay? Venezuela, you know, so I mean, I just mentioned the country where we know that, you know, introduction of cholera would be a disaster, but the field of introduction is big. There are some country, I'm not going to name, in here, name them here because we are not on name and shame exercise, but where we almost have more information on the exported cases and the cases occurring in their country. That's a minority, but still, they are there. So very quick on vaccine, because I know that, uh, you know, it's not a topic of the day and we're not going to discuss about the lack of vaccine, but I know many people will ask a question, even if I don't ask. Uh, so, Still, one dose strategy uh, since the beginning of the year, we have uh, uh, ICG had to uh, review and uh, 19 requests um, uh, in, uh, provided by uh, 12 countries. Uh, so far, eight have been fully approved and 10 um, uh, partially approved. And the partial approval was mostly linked with lack of vaccine, not because of the quality of the request, just because there was not enough vaccine and only one was rejected. Uh, and this in a context where we know that many countries are also pressuring, uh, reducing their requests before they even submit it. Okay, so this is a gross underestimate. Of course, last, uh, in the past year, there was 17 million vaccine doses that were approved for vac preventive vaccination campaign that have not been delivered because there is not enough vaccine. So, Unsatisfactory response to outbreak due to lack of vaccine. No preventive campaign, more outbreak, less vaccine, more outbreak, less vaccine. So again, a snapshot, we're not going to go into detail, but this is just an illustration also on the fact that the demand is not just on vaccine, huh, but also on all ma other medical commodity. Uh, so this is just an example of what has been sent from WHO HQ from the emergency stockpile, and the emergency stockpile is not supposed to be a supply uh, division, uh, it's not our job, <laughs> it was just built uh, to fill the gap, uh, uh, and you can see, uh, you know, the very sharp increase and the, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the quantity, I mean, over 50 countries, 11 million dollars that, you know, we have to fight for that because, uh, you know, the resources are not available. Almost 400,000 patients covered, not lab included. Okay, so I don't want to be, uh, you know, concluding on a bad note and say, okay, we are lost, uh, let's go back home. No, we have, I mean, you know, Cholera can be controlled. We have the strategy, we have the measures. Uh, the problem is implementation of those measures. Okay, so we know, and I know that you are all convinced all cholera deaths can be prevented. Okay, but the treatment is easy and expensive. Uh, the issue is accessibility to treatment. Yes, there are a few specifics that we will need to discuss, and that will be discussed about specific population during this. But in generally speaking, most of the people are dying just because they don't have access to ORS to start with. And then after there are some other problem. Okay, so for me, and you know, I have said that all the time. I mean, you know, uh, this is the utmost priority. If we cannot yet control the outbreak, at least we have to prevent people dying from cholera. We are in 2023, and people are dying just because they cannot have access to ORS. <laughs> You know, so that's that as bad as that. And of course, because they don't have access to a glass of clean water, safe water. So uh, I'll stop here. Uh, but again, that was really to um, to uh, highlight how much your work is important and uh, 
not that you are late, but how much progress the world still need to do uh, in terms of uh, improving case management. Uh, you know, not with very te high technical kind of things, but you know, uh, how can we ensure that you know people are not dying for such a disease which is so easy to treat? Voilà. Over to you. Uh, so uh, that's all for me, Isa.